12 Eastern time. I know it's late, um, but you know, weekends, I think I've earned a late night uh, after a long week. Um, but you know, uh, I was USL fan page has asked me and Hartford Green Monster to do these inside the COVID season vlog entries uh, from the fan standpoint. And we're starting this week, um, which you'll probably see next week. Very weird. Uh, but this week, we are playing, we being New Mexico United, we are playing Real Monarchs in Salt Lake City, which was supposed to be originally a home game here in Albuquerque. Uh, but due to the cover, governor's COVID-19 orders, we're not allowed to have a mass gathering of 10 or more people. I know. Um, but, you know, safety and all that. And, uh, you know, quarantine, too. We're allowed to have soccer games. She just said that the opposing team, if they're coming from a non-safe state, uh, i.e. every team in our conference but Colorado Springs, they'll have to quarantine for 14 days uh, because of coronavirus. Um, which brings me to my next topic. Next week, we will have a home game. Home game. Uh, in Colorado Springs against the Switchbacks. And we will be the home team. Uh, so our first home game, uh, nothing but New Mexicans. So, you know, shout out to the great Colorado Springs switchback staff there. They've always treated us very well in Colorado. So we thank you for allowing us to have this home game. So I will be traveling to that. Uh, so stay tuned for next week when, you know, I head up and actually get to see a match. Um, but tomorrow we play Real Monarchs, the defending champions. And we've had some pretty good success against them, uh, historically. Uh, our first meeting, we won 5-1, which was a beautiful game uh, in Albuquerque. That was, a, that was a game I think a lot of people realized, okay, the soccer team here in New Mexico is for real. And it was a fun game. We had about 13,000 fans, I believe, that game. 5-1 win, of course. Um, but tomorrow, I do think Real well, Monarchs will only score one, and I think the lads from New Mexico will score three. Mono Moreno will score two, and Chris Bees Weehan will sting the Real Monarchs in the Beehive State. Uh, shout out to Andy Hagman of Beaver Pitch for, you know, that great thing. So Andy, if you're watching, great job, lad. Um, so yes, 3-1 win for New Mexico United. That is my prediction as of tonight. So tomorrow, I will make one more entry before the match. And then after the match, I will make another entry. Uh, hopefully that post-match entry is a very happy one. Um, so I look forward. I think I'm going to try and catch some sleep since the game starts at noon tomorrow. Um, and EPL also starts tomorrow. I'm an Arsenal fan. We play Fulham at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, Mountain Time, so 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Two hours ahead, always. Pacific, you're one hour behind. Central, you're an hour ahead. Uh, but I... Oh. I'm probably going to get up early for that match against Fulham. So I need to get some sleep. So I will talk to you guys in the morning. Somos Unidos. Good morning. It's actually 11.42 here. And I'm in beautiful, beautiful old town Albuquerque here. Just a few minutes before match time. We have to smell out some, some stuff real quick. But it's still before game time. So my predictions before game time, I still think it will be a 3-1 New Mexico United victory. Amando Moreno will score two along with an assist. And Chris Bees Weehan will get the third goal. And United will come out on top 3-1. I also think El Paso will lose tonight to San Antonio. So hopefully that prediction is true. But again, we're here in beautiful Old Town Albuquerque. I don't know if you can see it. But there's the beautiful San Felipe de Neri Church right there. And our beautiful, beautiful plaza right here. And your beautiful uncle. And my beautiful uncle right here, <laughs> who is heading out to Denver next week, uh, this week. So when you see this, he will already be out there. Um, but wish him good luck. He's going to go get checked out for a new heart. So, new ticker. So, <laughs> we'll see if he actually does bleed black and yellow. And as I'm walking by, the Breaking Bad RV is driving around the plaza. Um, just another regular day here in Old Town, I guess, in the beautiful New Mexico. Um, it's weird seeing a lot of these trees because we had a really bad storm a few few nights ago here, and uh, a few of these old cottonwoods that were planted during the Civil War fell down. Um, but hold on, let's see 
If you can see the Breaking Bad bus, there it goes. So yeah, Breaking Bad. All right. And again, here in beautiful old town Albuquerque. So this is a beautiful sight. So if you guys ever come out, make sure you head out to old town Albuquerque. It's beautiful out here. And of course, governor mandate, we got to keep wearing masks, slow the spread here. Social distancing is big, but game time in a few minutes. So we're going to go mail this stuff out and I will talk to you guys after the match. Mexico United is up 1-0 currently, and a goal by, no, who guess who, Armando Moreno. So my prediction's somewhat true. We need one more, and Bees needs one more. But we're still here in Albuquerque, in Old Town. And you know, it's about soccer, but I also want to show you a bit more of my state. So here, right here, is the beautiful San Felipe de Neri Parish, built in 1706. It's older than our country, folks. And it's one of the best looking churches in the nation. Next door, we have our beautiful convent where the priest for San Felipe de Neri still lives up there under the clock tower. If you turn around, you're gonna see our beautiful plaza where in 1706, Albuquerque officially became a city of a Spanish colony and where in the, during the Civil War, there was a battle there between the Union and the Texas Rangers of the Confederacy uh, during the Confederate occupation of New Mexico. We keep turning, we keep turning, and we see the Romero House and the Basket Shop, which are two historical buildings here in Albuquerque. The Romero House actually being a place for uh, a house of unwed mothers in the 1900s, and the Basket Shop serving as, well, different things. Of course, a basket shop, uh, a butcher's, and a post office. It was also the church for a little bit, too, when it was during construction. Blandina. And then we have right next door, we have our beautiful Sister Blandina convent where hopefully soon we'll have a saint named Sister Blandina. And she helped build that convent, the first two-story building in Albuquerque, because at the time, building a two-story building out of uh, mud bricks, almost unheard of, but she did it. So folks, that's what I only wanted to show you here. And again, it's halftime. New Mexico United is up 1-0 against Real Monarchs. We've still got another 45 to go. Uh, Andrew Tanari did get a yellow card. So that's kind of, that, that's, a, that's a little bit downbeat for the birthday boy. But we're again, we're up 1-0 here in Salt Lake City. Amando needs one more and Beats needs one more. Somos unidos. I'll see you after the match. And that's all he has written, folks. New Mexico United comes away with a 2-0 victory. Armando Moreno does score two, but Chris Weehan was not able to get in on the scoring chances, so it's partially correct. Um, Cody Mizell with a clean sheet, a huge clean sheet for New Mexico United right now. The sun's in right there, uh, so we won't do that. But huge win for New Mexico United. They win 2-0. They sweep the season series against the defending champion Real Monarchs. Now all attention turns to tonight's match between San Antonio FC, who as of right now, still unbeaten. Uh, congratulations to San Antonio FC and the Crocketeers there. Great fan base and great well-run organization. And hopefully they prove me right tonight when they take on the El Paso locomotive. So I will keep you updated on that one. Um, I will make sure that and uh, that will be relayed in this vlog as well. So what's next for New Mexico United? Well. They head back to New Mexico. They're going to do some training, of course, because, oh, I just stepped in a hole. Uh, because they need to still get ready. But we head for a home match, again, home match, in Colorado Springs next Saturday. 3 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time kickoff. Uh, only New Mexico United fans will be at that match. So thank goodness for that. And we get to see them. And if things hold true, right now we're sitting at six points away from the playoffs. If El Paso loses that... El Paso loses, I believe they'll put us at three. So there's a chance that match we can clinch a playoff spot, uh, which would be fantastic because two years in a row for New Mexico United. Um, so I will be back uh, later with the El Paso results, and then we'll go over what I think will happen next week, and then uh, we'll close out that vlog of this week in the COVID season. Uh, so I'll see you guys momentarily. United, as I mentioned earlier, got a big 2-0 victory against the Real Monarchs 
Salt, of Salt Lake City. Uh, again, Armando Moreno scoring both goals for New Mexico United. And we are here at the Albuquerque Sunport, not to greet the team, but my cousins come into town to help take my uncle to Denver. So we're here at the Sunport and just want to show you a little bit more of our New Mexican culture here in our beautiful gift shop. So if you ever come to New Mexico, check out this beautiful gift shop as soon as you enter in. But I did talk to you about the El Paso game. Those three points in real uh, in Salt Lake City were huge because El Paso, believe it or not, just beat San Antonio FC. That's right, the undefeated, no longer San Antonio FC, 2-1. So they stay two points behind us. All United needs is three points next weekend for a victory. And guess who will be there in Colorado Springs to hopefully see us clinch a playoff spot. So until next week, week somos unidos, we are united. And I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado, folks. Um, New Mexico United's having a home game, as I mentioned last week. And uh, here I am. I'm currently sitting in the hotel room, uh, getting ready to go to Wibner Field. Um, not for the match right now, but for New Mexico United Weekly, which is on 101.7 The Team with David Carr and Adrian Montano. Um, so that will be taking place, and I will take you along with me and try and show you as much as I can um, that I am able to uh, with the USL copyrights and everything. Um, so some other big news that broke this morning. This will be David Carl, our great capo, uh, great person, just a great human being in general. It will be his last game as president of the curse. Uh, he has accepted a role at New Mexico United and his role will begin October 1st. And in order for him to do this role, he has to leave the curse um, in order to take this role. So David, I wish you best of luck. Mexico United, I'm glad you're not leaving us like Ron or Santi uh, or Kevon, but I'm very happy you are staying and you got a good job with a great team. So congratulations, David, I'm proud of you. Um, so yeah, I will catch you when I'm going to Weibner Field for the press match. So I'm also doing a Facebook takeover for the Sun News, so I'm listening to this news. And I will try and get some information about that to you guys. So have a good day. I will see you at Weibner Field. Don't forget, wear your mask. Just a big body there inside the 18. Here's Guzman, chests it, crosses it, back post. Suggs able to trap it. Suggs squeaks it across, Moreno, now Sandoval! And he's pointing to the penalty spot. A penalty kick has been awarded to switch backs. Directly in line behind it, and it looks like Levisi just leaves his legs. Valeski to the right corner, and we are knotted up one goal apiece. You wonder if maybe Kumaisal goes because that way at the center back. The world to good as well. Daniels cuts in. Daniels tried to poke it through. It's still Daniels has a go and it finds the back of the net. Ferreira putting switchbacks FC on top of New Mexico United, two to one. Uh, gets by Yearwood here, then Tete steps in, doesn't win that tackle. The ball breaks Ferreira, and what if it? Colorado switchbacks FC.